Hey there, college football fans. Chuck Mustache here. Today, we're going to go over the greatest game in college football history. That's right, I said it. The Red River. Beta! What? Oh, I'm sorry. It's called the Red River Rivalry. What? That's stupid. What? Okay. Try to say that fast. Red River Rivalry. Okay, let's go. Hey there, before I toss this over to the NIL Commish, why don't you hit that subscribe button there? Here we go, fans. Are you ready for Saturday? I don't know if I am. We got Texas coming in with Quinn Ewers. Looks like he's coming back from injury. Uh, that's going to be a good thing for them, not a good thing for the Sooners. Um, the only thing I'm looking forward to for the Sooners coming back off injury is the offensive line. Looks like we're going to have two or three. I don't know. I haven't really kept up with the injury report today. But last time I heard, we, we should have some offensive line back. Uh, wide receiver position. Pretty much depleted still. We might get one guy back that can help. Um, I'm not going to mention any names because the receiver room is just so terrible right now. I don't think that's really going to make a big difference. I think the big difference is, is Oklahoma needs to get this dang running game going because they're terrible in the run game. And Texas is really good in the run game. And also, Texas has an amazing defensive line. They stop the run pretty well, so we're going to struggle running. So I want to see if our offensive line can create some push or anything so that maybe we can get three or four yards instead of one or two yards in the run game. I know it sounds like I'm bashing my own team in this video. I'm just kind of going over the reality of it and why I think Texas is probably going to win this game. Obviously, they should win this game. They're the number one team in the nation. So if they lose, what's their excuse? Because if Oklahoma loses, the excuse is, well, Texas is the better team. They're number one in the nation. They're supposed to be the best team in the nation, right? As far as Oklahoma's defense, I'll try to make this short and sweet. Linebacking core, dominant. Best in the nation. You can fight me on that. I don't care. We got guys sitting on the bench that can start for most, most teams in the nation right now. Defensive line, probably not the best in the SEC, but we got a pretty dominant defensive line. And the, the reason why I love the defensive line so much is they're so young. So young. We got Jaden Jackson starting a defensive tackle, only the fourth to do that in the history of Oklahoma as a true freshman at defensive tackle. We got David Stone sitting behind him as a true freshman that he, he gets to play, not a, not a lot right now, but that guy was supposed to be the best coming out of high school. And Jaden Jackson, his teammate in high school, is actually on the field and he's not. So we are in good shape. The defensive line is SEC ready. Like I said, it might not be the best right this second, but man, they are freaking dominant. So... Linebackers the best, defensive line second, and then we got to get to the backfield with cornerbacks and the safeties. This is where we have our biggest issue so far, and Auburn definitely exploited that. Okay, coaching. First, I'll talk about Steve Sarkeesian. Uh, definitely has come in and shown that Texas can be a powerhouse, and I think they always have been able to do that. They just didn't have that right coach. There's only, you know, 10 or 12 coaches out there that can really go into a program and turn it around. And I think there's lots of sleeping giants out there like Nebraska that can be turned around overnight. Florida State, what in the world's going on there? But anyway, Steve Sarkeesian, he's doing great. I mean, wow. I don't want to talk good about Texas ever, but you got to, it's facts. Steve Sarkeesian has done a great job. As far as our coaching goes, Brent Venables, he's done a great job too. But he hired somebody named Seth Luttrell and then co offensive coordinator Joe John Finley who don't really have any sort of resume compared to some of the guys that he could have got at the University of Oklahoma. He could have made a big splash, a big hire, but he chose to go with these guys. And we were excited about it, and that's fine, but it's not working. So now our excitement is starting to dwindle. I need to see some imagination, and I also need to see what you guys have been saying, opening the playbook. Keep saying it's vanilla and stuff. And I understand Jackson Arnold wasn't performing very well. And then you had to throw out a true freshman in there. So it's kind of hard to get past the vanilla. I get that. But this is Texas. You can't bring vanilla. You can't. So this is your first test right here. Offense. You don't have to kill it. But you got to do something. You got to do something. So all those people that are calling for Brent Venable's head? No. No, 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 no. Not yet. We can scream out loud about Seth the Trail all we want if we don't see any progress from the rest of the season. And then if he doesn't fire Seth the Trail because of a horrible offense, then we can start 
talking about Brent Venables, and that'll be next year. Anyway, that's it. You got anything, Chuck? All right, then. If you like that video, click on this one right here where I talk about Lincoln Riley and the USC Trojans. They suck. All right, then. Baby.